Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with just another fan TV, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the video. Let's get into today's topic, man. Fresh off of signing Ronald Darby yesterday, the Ravens followed that up and signed to Davion Clowney today, all right? Somebody that they've been in contract talks with for at least the last week, all right? So um, let's talk about the signing, what it means for the Ravens, good move, bad move, and um, yeah, let's just do it like that, all right? So like I said, they signed Ronald Darby, a cornerback from Maryland. Uh, and the Ravens need to strengthen that cornerback room because it's a little weak, honestly. All right, so uh, obviously more than a little weak with all with the injuries going on with Marlon Humphrey, Rocky Seams, who's supposed to be coming back soon, and Jalen Davis coming back. But the Ravens needed more guys in that room. Ronald Darby is a vet and a pretty good player, so it was a good signing. I'm a fan of signing Ronald Darby, given the options that was out there. All right, now the Ravens come back, follow up with that signing to Davion Clowney. Now I mentioned that they've been talked with him for about a week or so. Uh, he was here for a visit. He left without a contract. Then he went to visit the Jaguars, left there without a contract. And now today he's signing with the Ravens, all right? Um, Justin Rebecca said that the Ravens and, and Clowney had a verbal agreement since Monday. Uh, so I guess, you know, he was just testing all the offers out. If they, he didn't like anybody else's offer, he was going to sign with the Ravens, and that's what happened, all right? So let's talk about David on Clowney, all right? Former number one overall pick, um, obviously one of the most um, hyped-up draft picks, uh, in, in recent memory, honestly, he was supposed to be one of the guys that could be a defensive great. Um, now, he didn't quite up live up to that status, but he's been a really good player in the NFL. He's played eight, nine years in the league. I believe he has over 40 sacks in his career. He might not have been a player that people thought he was going to be, but that doesn't mean he's been a bust by any means. He's been a solid NFL player throughout his career, all right? As of right now, he's 30 years old. And the last two years, it's kind of two seasons I won't talk about because that's the most recent time. There's no point in going all the way back to his days in Houston. Uh, because that's not who this is. He's not the same player as he was back then. He's a different guy now. So, last two years in Cleveland, 2021-2022, he's familiar with the AFC North, obviously, playing with the Browns. So, uh, he started 14 games 2021, had a really good year 2021. Uh, 14 games, 11 tackles for loss, 19 QB hits, and 9 sacks, playing 74% for the Cleveland Browns, uh, uh, the snaps for the Cleveland Browns that year. So, a really good year that season. 2022, last season, is where it fell off for him, though, okay? He played uh, 12 games, started in 10 of them, only had two sacks, and uh, I believe something like four QB hits that year. Uh, end up playing 63% of the snaps. I'm going to say that, 63% of the snaps. He ends up getting sent home by Cleveland because he was complaining about his role and use in the defense, and they sent him home, and that was the last he played for them, all right? Um, so that's the Dave Young County over the last couple of years, so kind of a little bit of a roller coaster ride up and down. But if he can get back to 2021 for him, Ravens have signed a real gem of a player. Now, to me, right, I know I said he had nine sacks in 2021. Um, I'm not expecting Jadavion Clowney to come here and get a bunch of sacks. To me, that's never really been the guy that he's been throughout his career. He's been a solid sack producer. I think he's had three seasons with, with nine-plus sacks, which is, which is nothing bad, nothing to sneeze at. But he's never really been a guy that's going to be a constant, uh, I get after the pass rush. So, yeah, he's had three years in his career. With nine and a half, with, with nine sacks or more, the other seasons are are six, four and a half, three, two, and then uh, some other seasons where he didn't have he had zero in uh, twenty twenty. He only played eight games that year. But anyway, so he's never been that kind of guy to me that's going to put up major sack numbers. But he could be a solid edge producer for the Ravens. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, he could be somebody that can help stop the run. Set the edge, and obviously he's still a freak athlete at 30 years old. He's still a, a, a tremendous athlete. So I think that the Ravens know that um, a guy like Tyus Bowser is going to miss some time. Now, how much time we don't know because they won't give any updates on his really his injury to say that they just say he's coming along. Harbaugh said that he won't rule out Tyus Bowser be able to play Week One, uh, but I mean we're we're deep in the training camp as we stand right now. The Ravens are about to play their second preseason game. And Tyus Bowser hasn't come anywhere close to being on the field, right? So I view that Clowney could be a guy that plays the kind of role where obviously he can rush the passer, he can set the edge on the run, and occasionally he can drop back. Now I think Tyus Bowser is one of the best dropping outside linebackers in the league. So I don't know if David Clowney can do that to that extent, but I think he gives something in it with his athleticism. And also, this is something that uh, I think when you look around the NFL, all the best D lines have waves of guys coming in off the game. So when I say, when I see this sign, this doesn't mean to me that the Ravens have any doubt of the ability of Ojabo or Owe. No, you need more than two guys coming off the edge to rush the passer. That's just how the NFL is. If you look at the Eagles, they send in waves of guys in and out the game. 
Because you, if you if you can get a goal, if you can get a, let me slow down. If you can get a tired offensive lineman going against a fresh defensive lineman, now your defensive lineman has the advantage in his favor. So with the Ravens doing this, assigning Clowney, I still think that Ojabo and Owe are going to play a lot of snaps. They're going to play plenty of snaps out there, but they have a guy that now that can rotate in. And Clowney is versatile. He can do a couple of different things for the Ravens. So I'm interested to see in how they use him. Um, now, uh, as far as um, when he'll when he'll be here, they said that uh, he'll be here like sometime shortly today. He's gonna, he's arrived to the facility, so I don't know if he's going to practice today. Um, we'll probably won't see him on the practice, but I would assume until like you know early next week, probably somewhere something like that. So uh, I think it's a good sign for Ravens. I think it's a sign that they needed to make happen. They needed some more veteran presence in the outside linebacker room, right? Uh, we mentioned Owe and Ojabo. I like what I like what Malik Ham is doing uh, right now, but they needed some more guys to where they say, "Well, you say, okay, I can depend on you to get after the passer." Um, and to me, that's what Jadavion Clowney brings. Uh, he brings a guy that, like I say, he's not gonna be he's not gonna be major sack numbers, but he's been in the league. You know that he can bring a certain level of effort and consistency, and that's what the Ravens are looking for right now. So. Um, before Marlon Humphrey went down, outside linebacker was a position that we were like, we need to sign some guys, we need to sign some guys, and the Ravens made that move. So I'm in favor of the move. I think that um, I think Clowney's a positive addition to what the Ravens have going on and what they need to do right now. Uh, I'm trying to pull up the roster so I can see just exactly who the Ravens have as far as um, outside linebackers right now. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got I got it right here. So obviously you got Owe and Ojabo, then Malik Ham right there behind them. Um, what else they got on here? And that's 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 yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Honestly, when it comes to outside true outside linebackers that the Ravens had, and the Ravens have tried putting uh. Malik Harris in there. I'm sure they'll try uh, Trenton Simpson there sometimes. So the way I look at this team and this roster right now, um, Jadavion Clowney was needed. He really was needed. So I think it's a good sign. And I think the Ravens uh, have improved the roster by adding Clowney. Um, so I'm excited to see what he does. And uh, can he have a positive impact on the team, which I think he will, because the Ravens need uh, reinforcements on the defensive line, right? Uh, to me, that's the biggest thing. When you have a great defensive line, that means you have more than just one guy. You have more than just two guys. You have three, four, sometimes even five guys who can get after the pass. So uh, if Clowney can come in and be one of those guys for the Ravens, it's a major addition um, to solidifying the defense. And I think that um, the first couple of weeks of the year, they, they can get through this Marlon Humphrey injury. He can come back and be healthy. The Ravens defense is looking really good. So that's my thoughts on the Javon Clowney signing. I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I'm happy that the Ravens brought him in. I'm happy that he agreed to the contract. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can produce on the field. So that's my thoughts. Want to give me your guys' thoughts on the, on, the, uh, on the signing. How do you grade it? A, B, C, D. Let me know. And I'm going to get out of here, man. It's Gabriel. Just on Fan TV. I'm out.